Hello, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're going to be talking about Vegas Pro 16 and how to mask. Now, remember, masking in this details only you can only do in Vegas Pro. You can do some limited masking in movie studios, but uh, it's like I said, it's limited. Not the kind of masking we're going to be doing today. So uh, this is me masking out a Korok. I wanted to be able to put a Korok where. Ever I wanted a Korok, so if I want, if you've ever played The Legend of Zelda, you know that you find these little things everywhere. You just kind of do some puzzle, like complete a rock circle, and boom, they appear. And so I wanted my Korok to be able to appear anywhere, and so I cut it out. So I went frame by frame, and I mask each section of the Korok. It's not perfect. It's uh, what I had time to do, which it took long enough as it was. Uh, but I'm happy with it, and I'll show you the little finished product here because this is what we're working towards. So this, I put it on a blue screen so I could key out the blue screen and reuse it again later. So I keyed out the blue screen so you can see, really, the effect. So that took a long time, and it's really only a couple seconds of video. But that is really what the power of masking can do for you. So it's not the blue screen. I added the blue screen. I cut out the Korok first. See, this is the cut out Korok here. I added the blue screen. I can take away the blue screen too if I, if I want to. See? This is using the rendered version so I can use it over and over again in other products. So that's the kinds of things you can do. You can mask something, put a blue screen behind it, and then, or I used a blue screen because obviously he's green and a green screen would have been a bad choice. But uh, if you thing is not green, then a green screen is probably a better choice. So uh, we're going to talk about how you can use masking, and uh, to do this, we're going to do stationary masking, and we're going to do uh, motion masking. So first, we're going to track this Oculus headset. Second, we're going to track the cat. There is Bateser masking where you can make words track next to something, and we'll definitely cover Bateser masking soon. But for this, for this masking, you're going to have to do it yourself. So first, let's scroll out so we can find this section of the clip. Let's see, I don't need this whole video. Let's delete that audio. My audio and video aren't connected right now. I only want this, and let's see, I only want a second of the beginning. So I'm gonna cut my video down, scroll in. Here we go, see that's 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 frames, 10 seconds, 20 frames. That's how your, how your uh, timeline works. We want to go right up to 11. So I want you to notice something. Whoopsie. We only have one second of video here. But that is 30 frames. I'm using the arrow key to arrow through. See, that's 30 frames. If we're going to mask all that, it could take a while. So first, the stationary mask. That's the easy one. And that's where we're going to learn the base of the masking tools. Hit event pan crop right here. First thing you want to do is make 30 keyframes. Okay, earlier in the video, I made a mistake in my haste. And I'm going to edit that part out so I don't confuse you. Um, but I'm going to let you know that, see this masking part right here? I need my keyframes in the masking line, not in the position line. So I'm going to delete. You can use the delete key on your keyboard to delete any other keyframes you've made. This is another good troubleshooting tip. You want your keyframe to be in the mask. So when you make all these keyframes, make them in the second line with the second line highlighted. That I will put this part in the part uh, I did earlier. But you're going to see during the tutorial that the keyframes are up here. Uh, that's okay. I fixed it later. The keyframes are down here, so now you know. So if you don't know, a keyframe is where you can create some sort of effect, change, or crop, and then it will hit the keyframes. So if you have something right here, and then you move this over here, look, it made a keyframe. And then it will track from the original place over to there while like it'll time it out to do it exactly in the amount of time it takes for that half second to happen which is where I did it based off this timeline keyframe right here the first one I'm gonna hit masking 
and then that gives you some new tools here. You're going to want to zoom in. You're going to have anchor creation tool selected by default. Uh, but first, let me show you how to move around in it. Select, you can select the normal edit tool and move it around. And you can scroll in with the mouse wheel. And now you can focus on the object that you want to cut out. I want to cut out this Oculus Go. Huh, my little box has fallen. So I want to cut out the Oculus Go. I'm going to select the anchor creation tool. And I'm going to trace this object with a whole bunch of connected dots. Now there's some tricks to this to make it easier. But first, I want you to know what happens if you break the chain. So rule number one, do not break the chain. You want this chain to go all the way around the object you're cutting out. If you break the chain for any reason, let's say I select back here, and then I select over here, and then I come back to this and I start a new chain, look at that this you can see all the anchor points but in this one it no longer has the anchor points highlighted if that's bad if that happens you need to hit control Z until your mistake is gone and then you need to hit this little V tool the split tangent tool actually no I'm sorry that I said that you need to hit the anchor creation tool and then highlight the top of this it'll turn into the V tool when you get to where you need to go and just one single click right there. Make sure that you have the latest keyframe highlighted, right? The last one highlighted, because that's the one it's going to draw from. And then you can keep drawing your line. That's how to fix your problems, because this that's probably going to be your biggest problem, is that you're going to break your chain. Break your chain, break your chain, break your chain. But you may the chain be unbroken, so... I'm going to finish this real quick and I'll show you how you can complete your mask. If you ever mess up, just hit Control Z. All right, I'm at the point I can finish my mask. So the next line it's going to draw is going to be a perfectly straight line. This is the last anchor point, and this is my first anchor point. While your last anchor point is highlighted, go ahead and select your first anchor point. See how the entire line will highlight? That's a good sign. Now I have this cut out. It darkens the rest of the footage. I don't know what's on my arm there. I think it's like a piece of cardboard. Uh, it darkens the rest of the footage and it shows you what you have cut out what's primarily in focus so if we look over here you can see that it cuts out of the oculus for the entire second that's because the oculus doesn't move that keyframe however does I mean sorry this the oculus doesn't move uh, the keyframe doesn't move either and that's why it works the keyframe will stay stationary so if your object stays stationary boom you're done now you have an oculus that you can do something with but what we'll, the problem is is you're probably doing a video and something's probably moving otherwise you would just get a photo of an oculus and cut it out in a photo it's more detailed and easier to do it in a photo editor in a video editor you're probably doing a moving object and so that's your real problem so let's go tackle that let's go cut out my cat's face so if you want to be done with this right click it and then hit deselect or I guess delete all selected there we go. Now um, that mask is gone and we can start over. So we still have our masking tools here. We're going to cut out my cat's face. Now we're not going to spend time doing details. Well, I do want to teach you something. So if, if you want to add more anchor points, just come back along the line. Throw in some more anchor points so that will let you do more detail. And let's say you weren't happy with this mask. You really just want more of the cat. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab this no, uh, normal edit tool, the cursor here, and then you can grab different anchor points and parts of the line. See, if you grab the line, it does that. It kind of makes a sine wave there. You can kind of tilt the line around a little bit. You can cinch in these anchor points here. You can really do a lot of fixing in detail. So. 
now I have my cat's face. But the problem is, is my cat moves. See, it's just a cookie cutter of the cat's face. That's all I'm asking is. And so I want to get my moving cat, so I'm going to go to this next keyframe. So now this keyframe is here. Then I move to the next keyframe. The cat's face moves right here. So one thing you can do is you can keep the same mask. You can move the mask around, double-clicking it. On, double click on the mask. You can move the entire mask around. If you want some clumsy fixes to your mask, that's a good way to do it. Another thing you can do is you can take a mask you might already have selected, right click, copy, right click, paste, and you can paste your mask onto the next slide in case it doesn't carry over. And then I showed you the cinching you can do too. So that gives you three options. You can move your mask around, you can cinch it up, move it around while you cinch it up. You can create a new mask on every single keyframe. But you now have the tools to cut out anything you want. It is a great tool. It's awesome. It takes a ton of time. But when you want to do it, you want to do it and it's worth it. This is something, if you just want to cut a circle out or a cookie frame, a keyframe or make a picture inside of a picture or something, you do not need Pro to do that. But this kind of masking, this freeform kind of masking, you do need Vegas Pro to do. If you want to buy Vegas Pro through my affiliates link, that would help me out a ton. If you buy Movie Studio through the affiliates link, that would also help me out a ton. Uh, if you're not interested in this kind of masking, but you do like keyframes, because you do, you still have keyframes in movie studios. You just don't have this little mask button right here. You don't have the masking section of the keyframes. And that has how to mask in movie studios. You can get a product that looks kind of like this. This guy here. I'm going to get rid of this. You can put them on anything you want. Put them on a blue screen, render them out. You can then key out the blue screen here. See, I have a chroma key effect. I have a video on how to use green or blue screens as well if you're curious. Uh, this one's quite easy because it was one solid color. I just popped the effect on, didn't have to do anything special. You could have to do something special in a lot of them. See them how the mask moves around there really crappily because I spent zero time on it. But that is masking in Vegas Pro 16. Thank you for watching this rather long tutorial and uh, I'm going to have some Udemy tutorials too soon where I talk about how to do editing more as a practical structure and a whole rather than uh, just one-off features of Vegas, uh, but it will be using uh, Vegas Pro and Movie Studio. So thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, liking this video if it helped you out, and I'll see you next time.